live. That should have done it. It says connecting. It says we're live on the radio, Miss Mary. What did we do right? I don't know. Hmm? You must have pushed the button. I blame the Grimner. Right button. Maybe it was Grimner that did it. Ha, ha, ha. Anyway, mm. welcome to In a Perfect World on the, today is Tuesday, the 4th of August, 2020. August? Stay away from the chocolate, August. Mm. No, August is too close. And our our usual... That too, but our usual (laughs) thank you to Grimner. Mary's loaded on painkillers, everybody. Just flow with her. And... uh, Hey, Grimner, you poor man, having to put up with us playing on your radio station today. <laughs> well, you know what? Right. If nothing else, we're mm. comic relief I know. from all of the madness in the world. Well, would you like to do the traditional hellos to our bots and buddies out there in radio land? Why, certainly, because in a mad, 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 mad world, oh, the only sane people that you'll ever meet in your entire life probably aren't hanging out at reallibertymedia.com. So come on over. You'll be welcome. Now, the smart well, people on. are juggling hand grenades right now. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, They're they not are. live. They're just practicing. No, dude. Leave the pin. Barman. Oh, <laughs> Gotta go. Come on over to. <laughs> Excuse me, I got all choked up. Ah, hey, if you're listening to this right now, come on over to reallibertymedia.com. Think of a nickname, join the chat, give us some static, and we'll give it back. <laughs> and right up top, we got Barman, the most splendiferous bar. bot in the whole wide world, oh, closely whoa. followed by Fido. Fido, where's Pippi? I don't know. We must have Pippi, who does He's not have long stockings. Pippi I also see Grimner, the RLM god, don't you know, who also posted in here, and I saw it on Twitter <laughs> earlier. <laughs> it's 75 years since the atomic bomb was <laughs> dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. What a coincidence! And to, okay. and to come. Yeah. Commemorate it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beirut now has issues. Yeah, many issues. Not a good thing. In the Beirut. Okay. But Israel had mm. nothing to do with it. Never did. Okay. Never will. You didn't just see anything. Ask them. Step they aside. Just said so. Go on. Be gone. I also see Moose Goyle. Hey, yeah, Moose. Moose. How you doing? And the lovely Miss Kate is Miss also Kate. logged into the chat. We got an anti and an anti with yeah, the tail yeah. going on. Uh-oh. I wonder if it's one of them prehensile tails, so like he can reach around and grab the salt shaker while he's trick carrying his plate. Uh, ouch. Just curious. Mm. That would be cool. I don't want to know. Uh, okay. I also see Asmo is here as well as Chelsea Denise. <laughs> hello, Say hello. Hello. Hello, honey. Hello, honey. Hello. As well as Chloe. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Whew. This is going to be a show. <laughs> yes, it is. I yes, it is. Coming. And when I when I'm done doing all the names and give you my my mm. little update, update. film oh at eleven, God. you'll know why I'm so freaking weird. Okay, no, that's uh, just, I'm just weird. It's the popcorn. Hi, Chloe. Hi, damn Van Meter. Oh, I know. Van hey, Meter. I also. Duh. Oh, Mr. Duh. 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 Hello. Everything didn't isn't dead. Master Duh. Well, he didn't kill himself because yeah, he just no, it mm-hmm. didn't happen. Mm-hmm. La 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 la. Flash is here. <laughs> Hello, me. From the <sighs> work is also here. It's well as yours. Work. Ramsey or Grammy, Ooh. Mary, whatever you just call me anything you want to call me because hmm. if I if I go hey. I resemble it. How about, it. can I but call you, I can I call you POTUS Biden? <laughs> POTUS Biden. Said anything I want, I want to call you POTUS Biden. It would make me laugh. POTUS Biden. <laughs> you know, even I don't sniff babies as much as that dude does. You've never been that drunk, huh? <laughs> no. Okay. No. Next. Ooh, okay. Uh, moving on. I'm reading the chat. That's it's you. Like, oh, I know. JJ's, no, 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 JJ's, the Scottish fella is also here, as well as Prince in print 
even. Ooh, Rob Boykes is right, also here. Good bubbler. I got you, bubbler. Oh, good, good, good. Hmm. Yeah. I <laughs> I see trust. No trust. One no one is with us. As well oh. as Vanna White, the Vanna White. Her pot, and her compadre <sighs> in crime, Weather Dork, is right below her. I feel you know safe why. and secure. He's waiting for his wind to blow her skirt up. That's <laughs> why. Weather Dork's a pervy bot. <laughs> I also see Phantom. The Phantom is here. And CC66, as well as Chloe. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, them. Uh, them ooh. yeah. Uh, the Cyborg Noodle may be touched uh, by the new cyborg noodle. the Cyborg Noodle. Yum, yum, yum. We also got some NCIV going on, as well as Frumpy. Ooh, and we got frumpy. a Lurky Five. Uh, lurky that's my five. alter ego. Sweet. Yeah. As well as Matt WJ two thousand and two, mm. we got some Papa Papa Pond Sauce in the chat, as well as Salt Lake City Mike. Hey, Mikey, Mikey. I don't know if Mikey will eat it. I don't know if Mikey. Will eat it. <laughs> don't even ask. <laughs> I don't want to know. It'll be a long answer. <laughs> Smokaz is also here, as well as the holiest Roger of <laughs> And to round out the crew, the one, the only, the Z picks. Z picks. Right here in the RLM. Mm. So, there uh, you go. So, uh, the Jews are not playing in Lebanon today? Mm, very, no, very interesting. No, mm. I did not do it. Mm. It wasn't me. Oh, okay. Mm. You sound, sound like Jose. <laughs> Hose B. Oh, I'm Hose B. Oh. Mm. So what's the so, deal? I, I took a nap before the show and I woke up to World War Three in in Lebanon, or rumors thereof. I've got no time to prove it or well, disprove it. There was a big bada boom, a uh, big bada boom, and then an even bigger bada boom, and then more big bada booms. Well, and then the earth moved under people's feet, and it. it uh, some of the videos that mm. I've seen, you know, people uploading from their phones and shit, it's like, yeah. okay, I see cars. I don't see people. See? I mean, uh, where, where mm. did the people go? That's my concern. Were they vaporized? Because if, if people got vaporized, yeah. then then you should be concerned about radiation, which, oh, yeah, wait a minute. You know, it's like we can't be, you know, the challenge of... Can you really be that stupid? Oh, wait, hold my beer. That's going on over here mm. right now, you know, like Portland and shit. Mm. But no, you have a massive explosion that just from the looks of the cloud, which I'm thinking it doesn't necessarily have to be a nuclear bomb to make the mushroom cloud. I'm thinking it just has to be a certain amount of megaton with an extra bada bing, bada boom. Mm. But I. I'm just thinking here. I don't know, so don't hmm. take this as fact. So, In any uh, case, you yeah. see a cloud that goes whoosh, like a r- mushroom cloud, and you go, wait, let me get my phone. I want to go down to ground zero. Yeah. You know, because most people, they see the mushroom cloud, and they think, radiation. No, here's all these people with their cell phones walking around in the debris and where there are vehicles, but no peoples in them, <laughs> and they're videoing this shit, mm. and they're putting it up on social media. Yeah. And I don't want to hear about it when your hair starts falling out. Okay. Right, but isn't it weird how the things that that we should hear about on video and internet are being erased, and the things that we shouldn't be told are being shoved in our face? <laughs> Was a wrong. Oh, you're a poet. Yes, ma'am. Officer Sweet. Flash here to correct your English by God and country. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Oh, so man. anyway, uh, I figure we're all suffering from COVID slash totalitarian burnout. And I'm just glad my people are never involved in these terrible things that happen. So just remember, it's not the Jews, what? but... Froggy it's joined us. The Jews. Hi, Froggy. Hey, Frog. 
I am low I was, frog. I was mid quote here, little missy. I know you was, but I saw frog was here. I'm going to hit my pipe then. Hey, frog. So there. In his honor, in the honor of the frog, I'm going to talk. Yeah. Well, wait, maybe I'll just wait till this is done over here. Yeah. I tell you what, you mm-hmm. want to know what I think's going on? I Absolutely. Think I think it's aliens. Oh, and you're do you know insane. why? What? Why? 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 Because, because, because of the wonderful things he does. Okay. Uh, um, yeah. <laughs> why do you think it's aliens? I think it's. It, I think it's totalitarian burnout we're suffering from. No, I think it's aliens, and the reason I think it's aliens is because last night when Wayne got home, he said, "Okay, are you sitting down?" And I looked at him, and he saw uh, I was sitting down, so I started. Because <laughs> I thought, "Why'd you break?" <laughs> yeah. Because that's usually, you know. Yeah, that's what I would do. Honey. Yeah. Okay. So I'm sitting here laughing, and he goes, I was talking with Jess, who's neighbor just south of us, and he said that he woke up, this is like Sunday night, Monday morning, 2.30 in the morning-ish, to go pee, and he thought, well, well, I'm peeing, I may as well go out and have a smoke. And as he stepped outside, he saw a light over our house floating about 25 50 feet over our house Uh and he was like whoa dude and so he ran back in Hmm. and he grabbed his phone and come out to get a picture of it and it split into two and as he's taking a picture and wayne didn't say if he got a picture or not but he said as he was taking a picture it shot straight up into the sky and so and the really, really freaky deaky thing about all of this, because when Wayne was telling me this, I went, you suppose maybe that's why Snuffles was crying Sunday night? Hmm. Because she would not settle down Sunday night. Mm-hmm. She would just lay there and whimper and cry, and and Bubba did not come into the bedroom. He he laid in front of the doorway. Yeah. You know, like on patrol. Crime, yeah, crime patrol. Yeah. Well, he wasn't crying, but Snuffles was in our room laying on the floor and just. Oh, oh. Yeah, I so, know what that sounds like, dude. I wonder. I mm. wonder if maybe aliens. Now, mm. the the other thing about this is Wayne goes. Now I know, this is not the first time that this has happened, and I just kind of smiled, and he he looked at me, and I said, "Oh yeah, I've had several people tell me that." Neighbor to the north has yeah. seen can red I, lights floating give, over our house. Can I give you the bad news, though? Sure. Hollywood has been experimenting with this on film since, like, 1910. So, oh, I'm sure there's holograms, but why uh, the hell are they hologramming over my house? Practice. You practice in the boondocks before you go to the city. You see if it works. <laughs> and besides, uh. the Midwest is where all the loonies that have ever seen aliens... Aliens always land in the middle of nowhere. They never go to the city. They're afraid of the muggers. And black lives matter. Because apparently and there's it, no black aliens out there. They're all green. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Nobody not, cares well, about some of green. them are gray. Are they? Yeah. Oh, okay. From what I understand, ah. some of them are gray. Started and I wonder cheese. if maybe they have a greenish cast to them. Mm-hmm. So that depending on... You know what light you see them in? Yeah. Are they gray but or do, are they green? Do you feel as though you have encountered an alien invasion in your home because your dogs were behaving weird? See, and I always think that mm-hmm. it's the ghost. Okay, you but know, still, the dogs are physically <laughs> reacting to something. They're not just yes. making things up. They're animals. They react. So yeah. something and was going do. on. Oh yeah, they sense things. But could it be? It could be anything of a frequency being controlled by somebody sent to us that's going to make the dogs behave a certain way. It's yeah, it's not rocket science be- anymore. But then on the other hand, <laughs> maybe you got aliens. <laughs> maybe, maybe we do have aliens. I don't know. But if they're coming here, yeah. They'd- you know, I hope they're not hoping to see anything real exciting because we really are pretty freaking boring. Oh, show them your boobs. Still like that. I think aliens just come here to see the boobs. Really? Yeah, that's what I think. What else is here? I wonder if We've destroyed everything that's standing. 
<laughs> ah, Wayne's. Hey, they sent him <laughs> ahead 40 years. And <laughs> oh, he's the landing part, mate. <laughs> yeah, wait till he finds out. <laughs> hey, Wayne, guess what you are? <laughs> We discussed it on the radio, (laughs) came to the scientific conclusion that you, sir, are from another planet. (laughs) Hey, wait a minute. You know know what he'd do? Uh, He'd say, wow, what a relief, because I was kind of (laughs) worried. Yeah, you you humans are kind of weird looking anyway. Ah. Yeah, we're we're strange. We're strange, but that's okay. So do you really feel like you're living on clown planet? Well, I'm always finding something to laugh about now. Sometimes as I'm, ooh, look, somebody's at Asgard. What's at <laughs> Asgard? Is that like it depends? Uh, Only with the, the tape put the sticky side it towards says, the ass. It could not find ooh, a definition not for Asgard. <clears throat> oh, it's a brand of extra strength condoms for gay men, says Mike. <laughs> hey, uh, how do you know that, Mike? <laughs> Weird <laughs> information to have. I don't I'm just know. kidding. I've read articles about stuff I don't do myself. Don't worry. I just still think funny. it depends that they put the sticky side towards the. That's not a smart thing, you know. Tear it off quick. <laughs> yeah, that's wherever. A, that's you know, how you. That's how you wax that area. I recommend. Oh. Yeah, I recommend adhesives to all the human parts that grow hair, just to make sure you feel alive. Oh, yeah, well. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, so with all with all of the ass clowns that are running around yeah. saying that they are in power, we are the ones that are the decision makers. Okay, <laughs> ass clowns. <laughs> decision okay. Makers. <laughs> well, since we have ass clowns running around making yeah. all of the decisions for us, so we can just go, oh, it's okay. They're in government. They know what they're talking about. I don't think so. Why? And, you know, with them being in such positions yeah. every day, reading anything on social media pretty much gives me just in the back of my mind that funny feeling that someone put something the adhesive side wrong and ripped Ooh. it off because there are there's lots of news articles that i see those and it's like wow. ow <laughs> i'm i'm feeling a subliminal ow <laughs> oh well you no. shouldn't be <laughs> stop doing that <laughs> As for aliens, I have no idea, but I do know that that yeah, there's been like four times that I have been told by neighbors mm-hmm. that there is a weird light that shows up. Now, the other night yeah. it was it was uh green mm-hmm. apparently, mm-hmm. but most of the time it's red. So mm-hmm. I don't know. Maybe it was a green for go. Hey, Wayne, and you lost your chance because we were both sleeping. You know, they finally got around to saying, okay, you can go ahead and border. And I was sleeping. I slept right through it. And see, the aliens must be of incredible intelligence because they always work at night when nobody's watching. That's right. Why expose yourself in the daytime? No, no, no. Creep around in the dark. Flash a bunch of fancy lights. Wait a minute. I feel like I'm being set up again. Hmm. I have no trust. I have zero trust for what I see, what I hear, or what I think. I'm finished with all that. <laughs> it's over. See, and I hmm. trust everything. Hmm. Everything. Well, to be exactly what somebody intended to be. Oh, don't go off the intention thing. That's such a cheesy way out. It is not a cheesy way out. I know sure. a lot of people that I trust them to behave exactly what is their base element. Oh. And some people are shit. <gasps> the and hell so they you say? They behave like their base element. Oh. And once I recognize that fact, then it's oh. like, oh, well, I don't want to use you for fertilizer because you might kill my flowers. Ow. Wow, that's the ultimate merry insult, isn't it? Pretty much. You're so I worth, stay away from those people. You're worth less than shit. Hmm. <laughs> Ooh, slap right upside the face. Do you smile and, and look them right in the eye when you say these things? Yes, I do. And yes. I usually finish it off by, and I mean that in a loving way. Mm. Hey, did you take my looking for God challenge that I put out there the other day? 
Hey, I actually did. Did you really? Because it's a hard yeah. thing to do. Because I know. It is. What happened? It is. Hmm? I fogged up the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. I guess you found her. <laughs> <laughs> Old foggy. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. So no, we'll call I that. Did, I did really. I yeah. got to. I got to look at, and then I thought, you know, this kind of sucks with me having to wear cheaters because I need to have amplification yeah. to be able to see up close. Well, no, but, no, no. It's a different kind of look. It's hard. Uh, I know. There's no I visual know. to it. It's more. It's hard to explain. I know that, but let's try. It's it's look and then let things go out of focus is what it what I did. It's like yeah, like the way I put myself to sleep at night. Because people go, wow, how do you do that? I don't know. I know what to do, but I don't know how to show it to anyone. But when I close my eyes, I still have visual where I see little floaty things in my mind. I don't, you know, my eyes are obviously closed. And if I focus on that, the next thing I know, I'm getting woke up in the morning. Hmm. There's there no, go. yeah, there's no segue, there's no counting sheep and waiting at, it's like, boom, and the next thing I know, hey, wake up, wait a minute, I just went to sleep, <laughs> yeah, eight wow. hours ago, <laughs> so I called this hmm. little segment, Mary's Search for God Ends, but yeah, let me, let me take a quiet moment and let you go on, and I'd like to hear, without interrupting, I'd like to hear what you found. In your words. What did I, yeah. what did I found? Hmm? I found me. That's what I found. I mean, I saw lots of little sparklies, and I saw lots of, you know, different colors and yeah. stuff. So yeah. I'm wondering if maybe I was seeing my aura on the inside. Ooh. I don't know. But Try it, it again. Kind of cool. yeah. It was kind of cool. But, yeah. you know, I do that intentionally when I go to sleep at night as well. Ah, so. I'm not the only one. Yeah. But not a lot of people talk about it. They talk about how difficult they have a time get, getting to sleep. And I have the opposite problem. I have a difficult time staying awake. <laughs> Most of this shit just bores the fuck out of me. Life. Oy vey. But this is, you know, it's what I wanted, but I didn't know it'd be so dull. <laughs> no, Grimmy, I wasn't on shrooms, although I did have some fungus in the yard when oh, I oh, mowed. Oh. I Bush mode the other day. Ooh, wow. But boom, first time since the accident, I was able to push mo, and my back told me about it the next day. Oh, that might be good. No, though. I, I didn't put yeah. anything out of whack or nothing, but the muscles yeah, that hadn't been yeah. used for a while yeah. were most definitely yeah. letting me know. Excuse me. Yeah. Do you not remember when the <laughs> chiropractor said twenty minutes? <laughs> <in an hour? laughs> not again. Oh, you're hopeless. So, Moderation. I I like well, but it it looked weird, you know, because I told Wayne, I said, I'm just going to, I'm going to mow along the fence, mm -hmm. and I'm going to mow in these hard places for you to get in with the riding mower. Mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm just going to do this. And then when I got that done, and I came in, and I got a drink, and I went potty, and I went back out, and I went, that looks weird. So I'll just get this other little spot. And then I quit, and then I watered where, you know, mm -hmm. I was no longer mowing. And then I went, oh, I'll go and get this other little spot. <laughs> and next thing you know, I mowed too long. But it's all good. Well, it's okay. I always thought that <coughs> after a trauma, physical trauma, when mm -hmm. I could get back to work, that the aches and pains were from the healing. Oh, yeah. Because if I was hurt, I wouldn't be able to work. There would be no work. It would be stop, crash. So if I could get through it and then come out the other side with a few aches, eh, they're healing. I'd be okay in a few weeks. Well, yeah, and I figure, yeah. yeah. I'm much better today, actually, but I was still. It was one of those things where it's like, uh -huh, my body's telling me you ain't 16 anymore. Just because you can turn those numbers around and make it look like you're 16. Doesn't you, <laughs> you and your numbers. <laughs> Numerology made easy. I, I, yeah. I, I, I. Welcome to Clown Planet, everybody. And we're your main clowns tonight on the RLM chat. Well, there mostly her. I've been just interrupting. 
I've had yeah. nothing to say. If you don't like your age, just turn the numbers around. Read them dyslexically. It's all good. It's okay. And you can pretend like you're that age, but be prepared because every action has an equal and opposite reaction. Yeah. Well, you only got got less than three weeks to write Grim about his birthday coming up. Oh, that's right. Yep. He's joining us in the 6-0 Club. <coughs> okay, Grim. Here's a little heads up. Don't overachieve, and and, and uh, don't over imbibe. Oh, because old bones don't heal well. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> and when you do over imbibe, your body has a tendency to tell you for a lot longer that hey, you have did it just a little bit, hmm. just a little. Hmm. Well, that was interesting. Double up on the virtue signaling. What's going on there, Grim? I, I got to see this No, shit. you open it. I ain't open it. Because, oh. you know what? Oh, it's an I voted sticker on your mask. <laughs> oh, oh, I heard the funniest thing. Um, what? David Icke yesterday, I was listening to an interview of his, and he um, he calls face masks face nappies. And oh, it's yeah, like, oh, my God, that, that is yeah. so freaking hilarious. Yeah. It's not nearly as funny when you convert it to American as a face diaper, you know, because that, that just, you know, it's like putting a big old maxi pad across your face, which probably worked for some people. But hmm. <clears throat> a face nappy, I just love that. For some reason, that just tickled the shit out of me yesterday when I heard that. So yeah, There's an English guy that hasn't been kicked off of uh, YouTube yet called uh, Carl Vernon, I think, little bald-headed guy. And he does, uh-huh. he's trying to be funny. Sometimes he's really good. And sometimes he's just informing. And he's got a good delivery and a good sense of humor. But I'm waiting for him to get kicked the fuck off of YouTube for telling the truth. Mm. Oh, YouTube's yeah. doing a suicide right in front of us. Yeah, YouTube yeah. doesn't like truth. No, and they're having to sell advertisement and charge for old movies that used to be free. They've pulled all the free ones off. So if you want to watch a classic film that you enjoy, you've got to buy it or rent it now. So that, to me, is an indication that they're not doing so well. Well, that's because they shot themselves in the foot. Mm. And then they're going, oh, that foot looks tasty. How about Mm. I take a bite out of it? And they're just chomping on that leg. It's, I think it's probably all the way up to their butt cheek by now. The Jews know what they're doing. Don't don't let don't let the illusion of failure trap you in a trap. You know what I mean? Because when when one thing fails, something else has to open up. Well, don't think that the guy that's failing ain't the same guy that just opened up. <laughs> Just call it something else. Ah. Yeah, and Americans and Jews have a thing for relabeling an old piece of shit and repackaging it and selling the same shit be- they had before that you wouldn't buy, spiffing it all up and getting you to buy it in a different look, you know, different program. Yeah. It's the same shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, mm-hmm. and you know, the, you know, it's really rocking me. What's that? <coughs> The similarity between the uh, physical virus that we're, that doesn't really exist and the electronic viruses that do. Ah. I think that over the years of using the Internet webs, that we have all been conditioned to view the word virus. And when certain people hear it, it's like a uh, like a. When you hypnotize somebody and you say a certain word and they cluck like a chicken at, at, because they heard the word. Uh-huh. Okay, over a lifetime, we've been made to show that that is ridiculous it's just for entertainment. And I'm starting to not think it was entertaining and they can actually do that to certain folk. And when they use that virus word, boom, they get their sheep behind them to follow. They go into a trance-like state and start acting stupid without knowing it. Yeah, but you know what? They need to quit using the word triggered hmm. because Why? trigger is no longer a horse. Hmm? Trigger is now something that happens to people. Oh, yeah, yeah, And, yeah, and, yeah. and hmm? you can't have a gun, you big old meanie poo-poo head with that gun that never went out and shot a single person in his whole entire life of sitting on your shelf. 
you shouldn't have a gun because oh, it's got yeah. a trigger. Yeah. yeah. Oh, the word. See, you and your uh, defining the dog Latin has served you well, my dear. Mm-hmm. 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 Well, is it lonely? No, you know, the other day I said knowledge is knowledge is more of a burden. You know, it's overrated and it's just a burden to have it. Because if it's real, people that you try to talk to think you're stupid or crazy. And if it's fake, everybody wants to be your best buddy. Yeah. Yeah. So to know it's something... Crazy, isn't it? Yeah, to know something in this time in life is like worthless. Because if, if you know it, first thing you know about knowing something is the system wants you to know that. Yeah. Okay. Why? Why is it they pick and choose what we get to discuss? Mm-hmm. It's called controlled opposition. Oh, yeah. Ooh. And tell us, what is that, Miss Mary? It's when they drop just enough seeds to get people going on it so that they can step in. You know, it's also part of the Hegelian dialectic. So they can step in and go, da, 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 see, we told you they have tinfoil hats on. Mm -hmm. I'll have them know I no longer wear a tinfoil hat. Mm -hmm. I have tinfoil bra because I got to protect the girls. Okay. Well, like with that relative that you were mentioning to me Saturday, uh, the the divides and the conquers are so hmm, obvious. Yeah, they're right in your mm-hmm. face. It's not like there's hidden choices. There's there's one size fits all or else. Those are your two choices. Yeah. Well, how did we get here when people got it? I mean, well, there's there's some diehard uh, mask debaters in full force on the uh, internet platforms I use. Hmm. And what, see, and we're, we're at a standoff because the pro people are looking at me and they're seeing some selfish guy that will not conform. And I'm looking at them yes. and I'm seeing a stupid monkey that is throwing shit at his image in a mirror. But, it doesn't translate. They don't understand. Yo, you're crazy. Oh, I saw a mask today. That's why it set me off. Okay. Yeah. Just yeah. one in like the last three weeks that I've been out. But there, see, when you get a rerun, so that means that the Danish government here is starting their shit again. Because we had a lull. And now I see one. Tomorrow I'll go out. And I'll see one more, two. And then by the end of the month, it'll be, you know... It's not mandatory. Yeah. It's not. It's a recommendation. So, of course, so. it's a recommendation at the end of a gun or with the clanging of a jail cell door. But it's just a recommendation. Paying your taxes is voluntary. It is. Yeah. <clears throat> I know that. Sure it is. It is. Tell that to the people that pull you out of your car. Oh, that. Oh. Well, see, I come from a softer time or something where uh, all that drama, I got around it somehow. Don't know how. Cool. Well, I mean, I had have been a long hair solid for the last 20 years. So the last nine, well, 11 years that I was in the States, I was still driving cars. No cops were even curious. Didn't even pull me over to nothing. I don't get it. But here I sit with my tall tales of driving without a license. Crime of the century. Whew. How did I survive? I don't know. How did you survive? I think I survived by not actually caring about all the shit that people say. See, cool. you, you might balance it with believe. And I think I just don't give a shit. It doesn't matter if I believe it or not. And if I don't see it, Eh, tell me all you like. I don't see it. Eh, go away, O. But if I see it, O, that could change my whole behavior. Well, see, it depends on if you've got your glasses on or not. Well, I told That's this... a visionist joke. <laughs> okay, yeah, but I told this story a while back, years ago when it happened. I'm going to repeat something. I'm walking okay. to the grocery in the early part of the day, 11, 12 o'clock in the morning. And uh-huh. I see a car, and in front of the car is a woman on the ground and a man. 
So I put my bag down, and instinct, I just went over and put my arm out to help the woman up off the ground. Because the guy was kind of frail. He didn't look like he could help her. So without any conversation or anything, I just helped this woman and help her get back in the car, and then I walk off. They say uh-huh. thank you, and I say thank you. Okay. <clears throat> in America, that could have been anything. That could have been some guy beat his wife down into the street. And if you go help her, he's going to beat you down into the street, too. See, news, propaganda, blah, 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 see? But here, where there's no news and propaganda, my instincts just run me, and I do what I see in front of me, without any concern for legal prosecution. But when I was home, I was always concerned about that. If you help somebody and the cops don't like the look of you, you're going to jail. It's the way they treated us. Uh, We were thrown off of an accident site as teenagers. We were the first ones there. The car was turned upside down. We stopped just ahead of the police. And the cops said, get get in your fucking car. Get out of here. So, wow. Okay. This is like 75. So that set my behavior for the future. But I didn't carry it to where I'm living. Well, there you go. Well, logic indicated to me that it was just somebody had an accident. But in America, where it's fear-based, I would have evaluated the situation and, and weighed out all the pros and cons and not gotten involved because, nah, man, I don't want to go to jail. I didn't do nothing to her. I get blamed for putting her on the ground. <laughs> ah. That's how America yeah, is. Yeah. <clears throat> Whoever cries first gets their way. <coughs> really? It's a court of law. Fuck yeah, please. There's no such thing as honesty or reality. There's finance. People people want money. They want to be compensated for the crime that, that has been committed upon them. And I say, fuck you, you fell, you stupid twat. Get up and, you know, take, a, take it like a grown-up. Stop blaming everybody. I'm going to sue the electric company for shocking me when I put the fork in the thing. (laughs) No, you're not. (laughs) Okay. I'm going to break into this rant with a little bit of good news. Good news. My oldest brother, Elmer Fudd, or Fudd as he would show up in the RLM chat, is now a great grandpa again. Wow. Male or female offspring? Little boy. Really? Did they name him? Yes. I don't know, but he, well, let me look and see. Ah, Michael. Hmm. That's all I'm going to give you. But he was five Ah. pounds, 12 and a half ounces, and Ah. 18 and a half inches long. Ah. Wow, I was like oh, long and God. skinny. Yeah, I was really small. I forget how how much I weighed, but it was it was bad. <laughs> oh wow, well, I don't have my uh, my mom to, re- to call and go. Hey, how much did I weigh when I was born? I forgot. So it'll be a mystery now. I just know that I was born at like twelve forty in the morning. Ooh, you pain in the butt. Well, I was supposed to be a birthday present for Mom. I was supposed to be born on her birthday, but I ran a week and a half late. So. I wanted to stay in the oven a little bit longer. Well, congratulations to Fudd and Michael. So there you go. Yay. I, I like people living. I mean, you know, I may not sound that way on the radio, but truly, yeah. I choose life over not life for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Just because I don't like you, that is no justification for death. That's just stay the fuck away from me. That's not die. That's kind of selfish. Yeah. Because you never know. Yeah. Somebody else you don't like might have friends. <laughs> I know <Yeah>. I do. <laughs> well, and, <clears throat> you know, the way I look at it is if, if you're willing to wish something onto someone else, and that means and it's okay if someone wishes the same thing on you. And if yeah. it's not okay, then don't be wishing that shit on someone else. Yeah, I, I just so, say it. I say it like reverse. Like I wish for you everything you wish for me. Then I'm I'm out of responsible. I don't have to be responsible. Oh, kind of like don't do unto others what you don't want done unto you. I got that from Cycle. 
Well, similar to that, I suppose. Uh, me and Sir, we see the same thing from different angles. So the definitions always sound different, but they're uh, they're really the same. I don't know. I could be wrong, though, huh? Grimmy said he was born nine months after Christmas Eve. Yeah, Daddy, Daddy opened up. He unwrapped that present, and then nine months later, it was like the gift that keeps on giving. Well, <laughs> what about the baby that's either late or early? How do you define what they were, present or not? <laughs> anyway. There's still a gift that keeps on giving. Because September is nine months after uh, New Year's Eve. Not New Year's Eve. Christmas Eve. Same fucking air. One week. Give me a break. Same anyway. thing, only different. Yeah. Okay, Miss <laughs> Different. Well, I was born in September, but I was, ah, I remember the story. I was two months, give or take, premature. So my actual uh, life should have began in November, but I kicked the door in and went, let's fucking go, everybody. I got things going on. <laughs> So. See, and my youngest was due Thanksgiving Day. That was the first due date. And then we went and had another sonogram because mm. I was getting really, really big, really big. And and they said, oh, no, hmm. no. Then they changed it to Christmas. And I'm like, wait a minute. I was getting really big, and you moved it back a, a month? What the hell? And she was born on Pearl Harbor Day. So she was a holiday baby no matter how you shook it out. <laughs> <laughs> Birthdays. Anyway. It's either it's either stuff yourself into a coma mm. or have to trip over all kinds of shit that you really didn't need but you thought you had to buy anyway. Or a date which will live in infamy. And guess which one she picked? <laughs> And and Fudd's great grandson yet, right? Yes, his great, great grandson. Okay. Cuz I wasn't sure if I was hearing you correctly. I forget how old yes. I am sometimes. Yeah, from his daughter. His yeah. his daughter actually had children before her two older brothers, but that's a whole different story. Oh, I In don't know. Case. Yes, dear. Well, I, I, I confuse me with details. I spelled Fudd with two D's. Is that correct? And it is two D's, like Elmer Fudd. Okay, that's I just because that's his nickname. Well, I make in notes. The fam. I make notes for the show. That's my ah, my sweet. hobby. Yeah. Uh, and what what I learned with you over the years is to do the notes while we're talking. Ah. Keep a I keep a window open for the notes, and when we strike something that I think might be relevant, I type it in. You should see there you that, go. that uh, some of the things that people do for the RLM stuff is pretty good. It's, Grimm's got some nice uh, displays for the advertising. Now, if only these uh, people on the Internet would stop fucking around playing games and, you know, TikTok and YouTube, start looking for some answers. They better do it soon, too. Things are going to get bad. Because you only got, what, three months before the selection, and Trump's been trying to postpone that already for the last couple of weeks that we know about. Mm. Mm. I think we were fighting about that, because I've said I, everything the government promises and everything they're going to do, nah, it's always the opposite of it. So, mm. well, if it's never been postponed before, 2020 is the time to do it. Well, so you can have all kind of 2020 hindsights. As you look back, you can go, 2020? Whoa, that was a butt of a year. Mm -hmm. Get it? Hindsight. Mm, uh, Hines. Uh, uh, uh. Well, Hiney. Hiney. I read a, uh, you know how I read lines and then I make my little notes here. I made two observations this week that I think are profound. Ready for the first of the profound in these? Profundities? Yeah, those. You know how everybody was going on about um, legalese and the word understand what it truly means? Uh huh. So I came up with an alternative to the word understand. You know what that word is? Uh -huh. I overstand you. I know, and I saw that in the chat the other day, yeah. and I warned everybody. Did you? Do not look up. If you're feeling moisture, <laughs> it is not rain. Because Flash is overstanding you. 
<laughs> well, okay, it's somewhere between bullshit and reason. I, I'm taking I know. okay because if you were to tell a, a person that say votes and believes in right and wrong and the law and all that horseshit, right? And you explain to them that what understand means in a legalese sense of the word, mm -hmm. they'd argue with you. You don't know what you're talking about. Guarantee it. But mm -hmm. uh, they have to be uneducated, but by TV educated. Yeah, there you go. TV education is way different than reality education. In, oh, yeah. In a TV educated mind, you can have violence without any bleeding or sweating or hair out of place. In reality, if I punch you in your face, you're going to wish I didn't. But TV makes it look so enticing. <laughs> like, like it's a party. <laughs> and they got all these little 130-pound girls just stomping the shit out of 250-pound guys. No, maybe, you know, maybe in your choreographed sports and shit work, but not, no, not the way they show it on TV and movies. It's insane. Well, see, and what I think is that they and and it's an impressive accomplishment. It really is. You got you got to give them that. It's one hell of an impressive accomplishment to get people to completely disregard what they see with their own eyes, what they feel with their own ability to feel things, what they taste, what they smell. Completely disregard that. And be live what they're told <laughs> yeah, from yeah. that idiot box. Yeah. Tell lie vision. Yeah. It's amazing. <sighs> Fuck you. Well, and wait, there's more. Well, what if so, your mind is still recognizing certain aspects of that TV delivery system as a positive? So your mind is clouded by, oh, well, I'm getting more good than bad. Let's not pay any attention to the old lady. She's crazy anyway. Blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? Or not? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, I am kind of, I'm, I'm in that kind of camp where I, because when the bad stuff really starts getting to me, then I start looking for good stuff. And then I start getting inundated with good stuff, which is awesome. Because, you know, mm -hmm. quite frankly, a lot mm -hmm. of this bad stuff, if it if it was as bad and as much as they portray it to be on mm -hmm. that tell lie vision yeah. in their program, <laughs> if it really was that bad, <laughs> yeah. then life would totally suck balls. And I'm not talking fun ones. Oh. I'm talking... Well, okay, well, maybe the, the balance point of it to make it real to the people that take it real is how they see the violence, the riots, and the, uh, what else, the protesting, and civil unrest in general, masking, not masking. All these things make them, put them in a vibration that's way different than us. They're, they get fear out of it, and I get comic relief. I think they're funny. See, and I, I, I do, I admit, I get some anger out of it mm -hmm. that, Damn it, they're still doing this shit. Mm. And I get frustration because, damn it, people, what's happening right in front of you is not what they're putting out there for you to be afraid of. But mm. you're believing what they're putting out there instead of what's going on right in front, front of, of you. you. Yeah. So, so I get the anger and the frustration thing. But then <clears throat> I take it in and I go, okay, I'm, I'm feeling angry. Mm. I'm feeling frustrated. I need to go be constructive. Mm. Even if it's just sit here and and watch my dogs be goofballs or go out and play in the yard. You know, I I make an, <laughs> an intentional go out and do something positive to to balance out all of the <clears throat> defecation that's making high speed impact with the rotary oscillator at the time. So yeah. uh, Well, how are you faring through all this drama mentally? Because you've had some opposition. Well, yeah, you had the car wreck. You've got yeah. opposition in your family interfering with, you know, people visiting each other based on a story about freaking viruses. And these things tend to, to uh, keep us down when we're already down physically. Then you get mental shit on top of it. Usually well, you there, get upset. In the, family, in the family area, it's now just the son outlaw. Mm-hmm. 
Ouch. You know, oh, no. Not that. So, well, no. I mean, I... they're still married and all that. Fun yeah, stuff, but, but you're I not. Am, I am. Yeah. I am out yeah. of the equation in his mind. Wow. I've been out of the equation in his mind for 10 years minimum. Ah. So that's nothing new. Huh. Well, he asked for my opinion and I gave it to him. <laughs> oh. Yeah, because yeah. you're not, you're, I think on the radio you might volunteer it, but who knows? In person, I, I don't, I don't know. You've never been too uh, controlling with your words. You know, when we talk off the radio, you you're very you listen. You know. Yeah. But on the radio, well, not so much. Here we play well, a little and, game. Well, and yeah. the whole thing with him is that <clears throat> he asked for my opinion. Mm. I gave him my opinion, mm. and I was just being honest. Mm. I wasn't being hurtful. I wasn't being blunt. I was measuring my words quite well. But mm. I disrespected him because my opinion differed from his. Could be your tone. And so, no, honestly, I was being quite nice, and and I actually told my daughter that she was in the wrong as well, and wow. you know she, which from my personal opinion, two thirty in the morning having a screaming match when you got two little ones and your your mom staying there. Wow, exactly, you know, yeah. so I gave them my opinion. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, you might as well when yeah. it comes to yeah. I'm not a big yeah, fan and, of that myself. Um, well, hold, hold and it's, you know. And I had both little ones sleeping with me at the time, so, you know, they were just the littlest one was, he was pretty sad, and I got him settled down, but mm. his big sister is like, it's okay, mommy and daddy are fighting. Sometimes adults do that, but you know what? Mm. They'll be okay. Well, is there any way to, to negotiate and come to a middle ground, or is everybody stuck on their own side? Nobody's oh, no, giving he's ground. Scorpio. He's a Scorpio. And I've already been told by my daughter that I am dead to him. All right, he's a Scorpio. What what month is that? I don't even know. November? Uh, first part of November. Uh oh, yeah. that's my wife's one. October form. first part of November. Oh and crap! When, when you are dead to a Scorpio, you are dead to a Scorpio forever. Hmm. Well, yeah, so, I'm I, a. My grandma was like that too. So, I'm a you Virgo. Know, and I've been under resurrect a dead person's personality and bring them back into the game. Just not very often. Yeah. Once I'm done with you, that's pretty much the end of that. It just takes forever for me to get there. I'll say, and, and I'm I'm just one of those people that I'm dead Thank to you. you. Really? Well, if I'm no. dead to you. No, no, no. You didn't see this, did you? <laughs> so if you were, I'll tell you this. If you were, you wouldn't. What? there would be no question about it. Oh, I understand. But, you know. With, I'm just saying, and perhaps uh, perhaps I rub salt in the wound because yeah, oh, I yeah. am one of those. I yeah. am I ghosting you now? Can you see my spirit? I'm I'm in your face. Can you see me? You know, because that's kind of that's kind of the way I deal with people that you are dead to me. Oh, I am. That means I can haunt you now. Bonus mm. round. So. You know, I I have a somewhat warped sense of humor. True. And although, you know, over the last five years, it it lost its fun quotient. And so now I just kind of stay away. You know, it's like, I'll acknowledge your existence. I'll say hi to you. But that's about the extent of the situation. I will not engage in conversation or try to. But, eh, you know, I'm not married to him. Because if I was, I would not be married to him. Wow. Well, you're no walk in the park anyway, little missy. Don't get no, crazy I'm not. here. Crying out loud. No, I'm not. You know, that's the I'm thing. one of those people that I just flat ass tell you. You ask me what I think, I'm gonna tell you. <laughs> yeah, there's a thing we all share when we're bitching about a weaker mind is we're all superior. I do it, I know. But when I think about it later I feel bad and I you know, I'm always. I either cut you off, or I spend the rest of my do, my days looking for a way to fix it. And I don't look for very much, so it's usually just cut it, cut it, and run. I have done that with some people. I've done it with most people. And and the thing that I keep falling back on is, you know, after you've been away from somebody for a few years, live or dead, they're out of your mind. You forget all about them. And maybe a brief moment here and there, something will remind you of a certain person. But most of your common, you know, common time where you're awake, you spend that in the moment you're in. 
not living in the past or living in the future, unless, of course, you're on the Internet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, because I use my games to, you know, pacify my mind so I don't have to think. And then I use my mo movies, I think, for the same reason, so I could just veg. And then when I go outside to, to do something, I seem to be able to focus a little better. Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes, and I know it sounds goofy, mm -hmm. but sometimes mindless busy work is the best way to get your brain back in focus. Yeah, when the blades are sharp, sweetheart, there's nothing mindless about it. you got to be aware. <laughs> you may lose a finger or a toe. If you're not that is paying true. attention. That is true. Okay, so in, in one respect, you look at it and you think, yeah, that's mindless. But because you've done it so many times, your body's on autopilot. And, uh -huh. Yeah, and you're smart enough to trust that that will work. And you're aware of it. It's When you're not aware of it, that's when it gets you. See, and that just that's another one of those things where so many people think, oh, well, I'm just not. I'm not paying attention. I'm not whatever, whatever, because your body is on autopilot, which pretty much lets you know that there are brain cells all throughout your body, mm -hmm. and they are communicating I, all the time. See, I told you. Well, not you, but I've spoken about that. Yep. Yeah. I took it to another level, though. It probably sounded a little wacky. But yeah, I believe it. Well, and I... Was it Dr. Bruce Lipton or mm -hmm. not real? It may I don't know if it was Bruce Lipton or if it was Dr. Bergman. Oh, that's that was, right. They're both. Yeah, I know that. I know. Yeah, the, so I confuse were, them too. They were talking about how all of the cells, you know, as as the fetus forms, all of the cells have the ability to become whatever part of the body they need to become. And way back in the DNA of each and every cell, they retain that ability yet. So. Mm -hmm. I thought, wow, that's pretty freaking fascinating. And, and the more you dig into it and the more you realize that every cell is like 90% empty space, it's like, dude. So this reality is basically just a great big shared illusion that we're all just kind of either bitching about or enjoying. Mm -hmm. And it's all based on the principle of duality. Hmm. Because you're either right or you're wrong. There ain't no freaking middle ground. But, you know, if you notice, there's lots of people anymore that are starting to get to that that middle ground area. And it's not really so much it's all this. And it's not really so much all that. They're finding their balance. And as people find their balance, then some nut job that likes to control the narrative. Because when you have people fighting amongst themselves, then they aren't coming after you with pitchforks and torches. Hmm. They start some BLM shit or some Antifa shit or bomb the hell out of some country. And, oh, my God, all of a sudden, everything's black and white, black and white, black and white, black and white. Hmm. So maybe that's part of this whole reality is we are supposed to learn that you take that black, you take that white, and you start blending them out. Hmm. Maybe that's part of this, and nah. maybe part of it is just mm. to enjoy the ride and, and ride through the black parts and ride through the white parts and, and have fun in the gray parts, too. I don't think so. I, I think that well, society has taken maybe, way way more control than you're accepting. Well, because I'm not, I'm, yeah, I'm not accepting it. It's uh, like, fuck I, you. Okay, I don't believe that by nature that I'm a violent uh, psychopath. That wants to go out and conquer lands and steal shit. That's not me. I could do it if I'm paid enough to do it, I suppose. But yeah. something like that's never going to come up in my life. I'm too little to to be uh, recruited into a life of violence physically. I'm too small. I don't attract people like that. So I've had to go with the peace, love, and understanding kind of thing and make the best of it. See, and, and I know enough short people, small statured people, yeah. that are pretty freaking badass. Yeah, yeah. To I'm me, not, size but I'm not doesn't have anything to do it. To no. me, it's it's more of, you know, who you are on the inside. I, I know some people that are just big old lovable galoots. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so do I. 
And I tell you what, you piss them off, and it's like they snap you like a twig. No, I know the opposite but they, of that. They They're, don't do it yeah. because they are lovable people, but they could, oh, could. quite easily. Okay, no, I don't think I don't think the mentality is there on some of them. Uh, I know a guy downtown. He's huge. Got to be six foot eight, and he's overweight, so he's probably breaking at about three twenty, three forty, right? And uh-huh. I don't, I don't. I don't see the anger in him to be violent. I don't think he knows. he He's kind of slow, slow-witted. And he's a gentle giant. By You just see him. He lumbers around. He's real slow. He doesn't touch anything and break it. He waters the freaking plants. So he's vibrating so slow. I don't think that it, it would ever occur to him to be violent. Sounds crazy, I'm sure, but... Mm. No, I know people like that. It yeah. would never occur to them to be violent. Yeah, yeah. That's what I mean. He's not threatened by anyone. Everybody gets along with him. So what would bring a violent mood out of this guy? Nothing. And, and you could bump into him, and he doesn't even know you're there. Huge. Yeah. And so, yet what's yeah. crazy about that whole thing is you've got these people that it would never occur to them to be violent. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And conversely, there are people that you could look at them and you would think, you know, it's like the Ted Bundys of the world or the, think of a mass murderer. <laughs> well, he was such a normal guy. He was a really <laughs> good neighbor. We never, I'm so surprised. I would have never suspected that that ball, that bucket of balls that he had was really human balls. But, you know. <laughs> wow. Really? <laughs> I thought serial killers hunted women. Hmm. No, well, Jeffrey Dahmer was a little bit different. When oh, it yeah. He, well, but, yeah, I don't know. That's the in, stories. Well, yeah, know. it's stories. And yet, you know, and I think that is part of this this duality paradigm that, that we need to work our way through. And that's why real- I think all that shit is made up exaggerated bullshit. And po- it, perhaps it is, and perhaps that's what we need to do, is we need to get to the point where we go, oh, bullshit. Did you I ever, call bullshit. Did you ever live in a one-bedroom a, a one apartment in a city like where Jeffrey Dahmer was supposed to be living? The smell from your neighbor would have not been a secret. The comings and goings and shit like that, would, everybody knows what you're doing in an apartment building. You pass each other in all ways. Or staircases. And yet when I lived in the city, yeah. which was a long, 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 long time ago, yeah. and it really wasn't, I mean, Colorado Springs. So Still, eh, it's a lot it, of people. It was a, to me, that's a yeah. big city. Yeah. But when I lived there, you wouldn't believe how hard it was to get someone to make eye contact with you. Yeah, but they want I you mean, to think seriously, that. Seriously, yeah, you know, it, it was one of those weird things where, you know, mm-hmm. coming from Podunkville, USA, and I'm always like, hi, how hi. you doing? Yeah. Have a good day. <laughs> hi, how you doing? Shut up, and, Mary. <laughs> and as soon as I say something, the yeah. head goes down. Wow. And it's like, la, 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 la. And it was a, I mean, the first like three, four months that I lived there, uh-huh. it was a real culture shock for me because it's like, what? Nobody wants to talk. Nobody, even at the grocery store, the checkers wouldn't strike up a conversation with you. And it was like, okay, I worked at a grocery store, people. I know. This way, people don't feel so bad about how much they're dumping in this place. You think, yeah. And how little they're getting for it. Yeah. You need to converse with them. But uh, well, didn't the you know, COVID? So it was a bit of a culture shock. So I can almost, I can almost see how some neighbors would be like, "You smell that? No, it's coming from the neighbor. You don't want to know." Yeah, but see, the COVID just leveled the field, so everybody's like, "What you don't want them to be like." Yeah, now everybody's afraid of everybody because it's another human. They're a stranger danger. You know, this this is leveling up the stranger danger thing. Hmm. How do you mean? Is what is leveling it's up? It's just stupid. Oh, okay. It's making it more common. Level. Mm-hmm. All right. I was yeah, because now oh. it's they could be carrying something invisible that could kill you, as yeah. opposed to yeah. being someone that just you know beats the shit out of you just because they can. Because I know people that have done that as well. I have 
personally, you know, I like I know their name, mm. and from a distance, I saw them just just all of a sudden start wailing on someone, mm. and me being dumb country girl go, the fuck you think you're doing, you know, and once I mouth off, mm. then usually the bouncer from the bar comes over and cleans up the mess, but because yeah, I've been around seeing. I, I'm not as prim and proper as some may think I am. <laughs> oh, you're not. I have not lived a chaste life, <gasps> if, if Ooh, you will. Ooh, you bad girl! I know. I have seen Grim, things, and I have, Mary's being a dirty girl. Put your headphones and on. And I have actually had to defend myself in a bar, and yeah. I broke a pool cue mm-hmm. and a beer pitcher on their head. Baby. Wow, you're a hell of a first date. Well, they pulled my halter top off of me on my birthday. No, that's not funny. In the middle of the yeah, bar. Yeah, no, that's not funny. Yeah, some no, it's people, not. Yeah, so, they get Yeah, drunk. pool cue in one hand, beer pitcher in the Smack. other hand, and then I got dragged out of the bar. Yeah, boobies <laughs> flapping all over the place with pool cue dust all over them. It's so, well, so beautiful, Mary. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, one of the guys that... that grew up like two blocks away from me, happened to be there, and he took his jacket and threw it over me as they dragged me out of the bar. But Yeah, yeah. It, it's amazing how we, there really is a separation on how we behave. Some of us are t- twisted and some of us seem twisted and truly aren't. But the rest of the herd looks at us and points and goes, look at that long-haired freak. Yeah, well, you know, while their their husband's banging their 12-year-old. So, yeah. You know, that's how you know. Well, see, whatever you see in life is usually the opposite of what you believe it to be when you first see it. That's my history. I'm usually wrong on looking on. Once you make contact and you talk to somebody, most of the time I find out, oh, they're pretty cool. But if I went on appearances, I'd think I'd never talk to anyone because everybody's got a flaw that I will... Uh, identify and then isolate and then pick apart. Well, yeah, everybody has flaws. Yeah, but so I'm I perfect. I'm perfect. I'm in a perfect world. I uh, do a perfect show. <laughs> okay. What? Now, I will admit to my perfection. I am <laughs> a perfect angel <laughs> when I want something. Yeah. And a perfect asshole when you I don't, don't get, get it. it. Yeah. Well, then keep your expectations very small. It's my advice. There you go. But, you know, I learned something on the Internet that I had to write down for the show today. Oh, yeah? Eh, I don't know if it's a question or a statement. I'm going to put it in the notes as a question. Okay. I'm illiterate. Okay. Hmm? How did I come to this decision? Or a question. Um... Uh, I don't know. Dog Latin, perhaps? You know, I've learned along with you over the years that when we speak, we're saying words in the wrong orders, that with wrong meanings, but we're conditioned to believe that's the way they're used. So we do. Mm-hmm. But that's not the truth. And then when you they call it grammar and they call it proper English and all this shit, right? Oh, mm-hmm. and this leads up. See, I'm going to interrupt that with Grim was making a point of saying, I think it was Grim, is they're uh, calling the educated are saying uh, proper grammar is racist. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, because, you know, they, okay. they're losing ground on the other. So. Yeah, oh, they're replacing the lives matter with some other shitty, stupid idea. Well, yeah, because they're okay. educated idiots in the ivory towers of educraption, and they will tell you, by golly, when you talk all prim and proper, mm. you are racist because mm. you don't talk like the simple folks do, <sighs> and you don't use that ebonic shit that washed out faster than Common Core did. <laughs> Changes. Well, then I must be illiterate. Because I'm not reading the language. Something is amiss. You know, I look at the same things you see, and I see fraud, failure, fuck-ups. But I'm never drawn into the story right away and go, wow, like the COVID thing. Eh, another crappy fucking story from the government. 
And I Man. was kind of calmed down at first. Oh, well, let's see how it plays out. Well, no, let's not see how it plays out. But you're going to sound like a lunatic. <laughs> the trade-off. Yeah. You know what I bet I still sound like today? What's that? A lunatic. You know why? Uh, because you are one. <laughs> well, that could very well be. But my stand on it is that I have the ability to think things through and come up with my own yes or no, not the one I'm given. Ah. Uh, and I also believe that we all think on different frequencies. We don't yeah, all we do. think on the same. If we did, we'd overload one frequency and probably blow it up. So all us billions of critters all running around, we have to be on a different frequency. Hmm. And it makes interactions a little bit dramatic, I think. We buy yeah. shit like war. How can people today in 2020 believe that it's necessary to bomb another country with violence instead of negotiating with peace? We've got all the tools for peace. Yeah, bomb them into democracy, by golly. Well, what is all the violence? How did they justify bombing civilians? Uh, it's still 2020. They've been doing it for a long time. And it continues. It never ends. It just gets more glorified. Because they have to keep us traumatized in order to make us pliable. And see, when you, when you said that you consider yourself illiterate because yeah, yeah. they have a certain bunch of definitions for words and they have certain spellings and they uh, yeah. have certain grammatical rules. I don't get it. Well, I figure if they can have certain spellings and they can have certain grammatical rules, mm -hmm. then all things being equal in a perfect world... I can create my own damn spellings, and I can create my own damn meanings, mm. and they can be acceptable meanings that everybody else gets. Everybody else, to use the old word grocks, mm. instead of understanding, that, yeah. you know, if, mm. if they can do it, why can't I? Mm. And if mine catches on, then theirs goes by the wayside, doesn't it? Well, now I do have to admit mine has not caught on because I just don't have as uh, it's not, have quite the venue. No, it's not but, to be caught on. It's not for us. It's for you. Yeah, you're you're yeah. physically damaged from your car accident, but you're not mentally damaged from your car accident. Hmm? Yeah, but I'm not even really damaged anymore. I'm I, just I'm, I am I am on the recuperative side. You've made up your freaking mind. That's the difference between you. And a victim of the corona. The corona victim is looking for something to blame for why they don't feel good. Instead of taking responsibility for why they don't feel good and doing something about it, let's just nag and whine and complain. Yeah, so it's like, oh, I've been diagnosed. I have corona. Mm -hmm. Well, look at you. you. You've at got you. the common cold. <laughs> Yay, I'm so yeah. happy for you. <laughs> and, you know, even as they've just got the last little sniffles or whatever that they're dealing with, I was diagnosed with corona. Mm. Big whoop. Big whoop. Do you know that there's like umpteen gazillion cold viruses in the world? You will never in your whole life get through all of them. Ever. Hmm. So deal with it. Yeah, but my, no, my sickness. going to find you. No, my sickness is way worse than yours. Is it? Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, you know, you can have your sickness, and I'll have my sickness, and then that way you can be happy with your sickness, and I can be happy with my sickness, and we'll both be happy little sick fuckers. Mm. How's that sound? Well, I've got a, a bar story I told you years ago that I want to repeat, another one. Okay. <laughs> and this is what came to mind with what you just said. Mm-hmm. We had, uh, it was 1987 or 1988. And the bar owner had just got one of these bars with red lettering that you could type words into, and it would leave a message and display it in this big red box over the bar. Uh-huh. And my contribution to it, <clears throat> we had a half a dozen get gentlemen uh, regulars in the bar, all named George. So out of my wit, I thanked all six Georges, one after the other, and sure as fuck, when they all saw that, they sat in the bar arguing about which George was who. 
<laughs> I'm the first George. How do you know that, George? Maybe you're not. Maybe it was George. Maybe George of the Jungle but, was the George I, all right. was talking to. So we get this new toy to play with in this bar. And then, see, this is what I mean about 90% of this is it's bullshit distraction. And they aren't marveled at, well, look at this new toy we got to play with. They're more interested in arguing about the order of the players. And they're all named the same. Competition, instead of, hey, what is this? They just fight. Am I, is this making sense to you or not? Uh-huh. Okay. I thought I lost you. Or maybe no. you were reading. <laughs> no, I'm listening and scanning. Ah, the scanning part makes me wonder if you're paying any attention. <laughs> but I, I've hit these like weird moments in life where I see progress, and then I look around me, and all my peers are arguing about something that's stupid. Yeah, but to them, it is very, very important, or they wouldn't be arguing over it. Wow, well, okay. See, George, 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 and George are the same as COVID to me. Yeah. Just arguing about what the other guy should do and not paying any fucking attention to the medical facts that are right in front of you. No, so what we have... <clears throat> We've got these raging freaking Nancy girls that, you know, get married to women. And then they reproduce and they mm -hmm. they sit around and complain about everything. Like, wow, what a world. Sure glad I'm not part of that. But I have, because of the Internet webs, I have the ability to see that with my own eyes and know it's real. Instead of just like a, when you were talking and before the show telling me about Beirut. That's just a story. I've yet to see any links or anything. I just woke up before the show and boom, 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 did radio. But maybe there was a thing in Beirut. Maybe there wasn't. How do I know? I didn't hear well, anything. Well, you don't know. Yeah, you didn't see the big bada booms on TV and all that other fun stuff. And mm. I, I, I saw something in the RLM chat, actually. Mm. Mm. Um, and so I came over and was like, okay. Let's go check this shit out. Go look mm. on Twitter. See what's going on on Twitter. And Twitter. then it was, whoa, dude, that's a big bada boom. And then my mind went into the whole, what the hell's going on here? Something ain't right here. Yeah, but so, Mary, with all, there's, two, there's almost 200 countries on Earth, right? Why is it? that we always get our news about a specific place and it's spread every fucking where and they say the same thing about it and there's no variety there's wow it's all this it's like a script being enacted it's not like a yeah. life that i'm observing it's like i'm watching a movie well maybe that's because we are watching a movie mm -hmm. Ooh, the aliens have landed. They took Mary. <laughs> well, maybe we are, and maybe the maybe. movie screen is actually in our eyes, and it's being interpreted by the synapses in our brains. Hmm. Anything's possible. Right, right. But we're we're convinced that we're educated and we know shit because we look with our eyes and see it on a screen, and the screen tells us so. Therefore, it's true. And I'm starting, I sit here, sometimes I sit alone and wonder, I wonder what kind of world other people see. They can't see what I see. Couldn't work that way. Have you ever been to Disneyland? Yeah, but not Disney World, but the one in Anaheim when I was a teenager, yeah. Yeah, okay, I went to Disneyland with the kids. We were like um, the Griswolds. I mean, we had a, <laughs> yeah. God, I don't remember what year Suburban, but it was, it was not a pretty Suburban, mm -hmm. but... We had a great big old sign put in the, the driver's side back window that said California or bust. <laughs> you know, spelled it wrong and everything. We were having good, we yeah. was being tourists. The Beverly and we, we did go to, to Disneyland mm -hmm. and they have this ride. It was a Star Wars ride and they you know, you sit down and you get buckled in and it's like this is a great big theater. Why are we having to be buckled in in a great big theater? 
well, the floor moves and rocks and jostles and things move up and down. So after about the first couple of minutes, it becomes very interactive and you really start feeling like you're a, a Star Wars fighter flying down and and the girls were not real keen on it. Not at all. Matter of mm. fact, my youngest one, who is the crazy one of the two, she, she's the one that likes all those wild ass rides. Mm. She was not happy at all when we got out of there. Wow. But she was like eight years old at the time. So you know, oh, she went yeah. on other crazy rides, yeah. but that one she did not like. Mm. In any case, mm. it was like a it was like the early stages of virtual reality kind of thing. Mm. And, you know, it's a very interactive watching of a movie and you were moving all over the place and, and it tricked you because you, you know, it tricked your mind into thinking you were actually flying this fighter. Now they've gotten that virtual reality stuff so advanced and they've got so many neurotoxins in our system between the fluoride and the aluminum and the barium and the strontium and, and the glyphosates and the, all the other lovely little things brought to you by modern technology to make the world a more habitable place. Mm. For who? I don't know, but not for us. Mm. But they've got all of this shit, and they've had years of just gradually putting us, putting it in us and saying, oh, it's not enough to do any damage. They don't tell you that it's a cumulative effect. And so after all of these years, and then these people start seeing holograms, and they start seeing virtual reality stuff, mm -hmm. and they start watching movies that really draw them into it. And and it's not surprising that people just go, whoa. And, and it really has. It's made me step back and mm -hmm. go, this is really a very good virtual reality thing because, man, I even felt that mosquito bite me. Well, some bitch is drawing blood. You know, so perhaps, perhaps mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. on a quantum level, perhaps source creator, whatever you want to call it or not nothing at all, More. perhaps we are a program in a computer mm -hmm. and we just think because that was programmed into us to think, mm -hmm. we just think that we have free will, mm -hmm. but we're actually acting according to a program mm -hmm. in a computer. Wow. On a universal scale. Then I must be a glitch. Well, or it was programmed that way. Oh, okay. But you know what you made me think of? Reminded me of the days of Disneyland. When I was mm -hmm. there in the 70s, early 70s, as a young teenager, uh, Monsanto was huge. A huge part of the Disneyland building uh, uh -huh. programs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you'd see it on Monsanto everywhere. They had a big stake in, with Disney. So, if you have any love for Disney, you should lose it because they're tied to Monsanto. Oh, I've I have no. That was a conspiracy theory moment from your friend Flash. You're welcome. What? You know. Hmm? <clears throat> I read something earlier today that conspiracy theories are fed to people in order for those that, once again, it's a controlled opposition shit, hmm. in order for those that are of that mindset to take it and run with it. And they're given just enough proofs, just enough facts, just enough details to where they can run with it. And then someone oh. else goes, oh, but those facts don't mean that at all. Oh. They mean this over here. And you are a conspiracy theorist. Which basically feeds back into the beast. Mm. You know, I, it's it's all part of the game. And once yeah. you realize it's a game, yeah, you can point this shit out. But mm. it's like, okay, and so now what? What are you going to do about it? Nothing. Well, you recognize it's a game and you either play it or you walk away from it. Mm. Mm. Well, I chose to walk. Yep. There you go. And I'm telling you, as long as you stay out of commerce and don't try to get rich, nobody gives a shit. People only want to control you if you have wealth. They want to control poor people in groups, not singular. That's too much work. That's like herding cats. Well, they do like to control the homeless people because they put those spiky in things on benches groups. and shit so you can't sleep on them. But That's why I said in groups. We ought to listen. Sometimes I say the right thing. I morning. heard in oh. groups. Oh, okay. 
Just checking. <laughs> I heard in group. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> but I've actually, you know, out in Denver, well, seen hmm. those benches where, yeah, you can sit on them for a little while, but you start getting the waffle effect going on your backside. Mm-hmm. Can you imagine trying to sleep on something like that? Yikes. I, I don't remember who built the monorail at Disneyland, but I used to ride the shit out of that monorail. Hmm. Welcome to the Disneyland all wig monorail system. We'll be traveling at a ground speed of approximately 30 miles an hour. Please keep your arms and legs in the moving car at all times. Uncle Wally will fuck you up in court. Thank you. All wig. Wow, you did that really well. Yeah, but it was all wig, I think. The Disneyland all wig monorail system. Because I must have rode it up, fuck, a hundred times. Maybe more. Over years. Yeah. Because we'd go yeah, and ride it the, a couple of times. I rode the one at Worlds of Fun, and that was enough. Because mm. I'm not crazy about heights. So. Well, it used to go from the um, Disneyland Park, the middle of the park, to the hotel across the street. Ah. Because you could not get away with smoking <clears throat> a thing in a Disneyland mm-hmm. in 1970s. No, but man, you get yourself thrown in jail. Huge. So we used God, to take... Can you- but, Could you imagine taking a hit of acid before you went in there? No, they they got and having uh, no. having life size no. goofy no. come up to you. Security <laughs> would take you the fuck away. They've got uh, what do you call them? They get people in the crowds that work for Disneyland to oh, yeah. keep an I eye know. on all the oddities, anything that falls without the gu- outside the guidelines. They go check it out. So, no, you do any kind of drugs there, you're just asking for trouble. But being stoned and coming to the park, with, you know, when you've been there, nah, nobody noticed that. But if we would have smoked it on the property, somebody would have turned us yeah. in. So we would take the monorail to the hotel and then walk down to Ball Road, <laughs> go to Sambo's or whatever it was, Denny's, get a cup of coffee and smoke it on the way back. Wow. Walking. See, and I just, I remember yeah. walking around Disney, and I was worse than the kids. That was huge, too. Jeez, yeah. what, a, what a place. Yeah, it was huge among us, and the freaking lines were insane. And they built it on Ball Road. It was hysterical. I like the word ball. It's round. Ah. It's round. Ball. I'm, I'm ball. A, yeah. Ball. Got to think for circles. Ah. <laughs> See, snuck that one right in there. Mm-hmm. Yes, you did. Well, bam, high five. So let's do what the government does and make the odd common so that the people, okay. so we could tell the people to wear goggles and space masks and they'll do it. Huh. Mm-hmm. I wanted to be a spaceman. Mm-hmm. That's what I wanted to be. Okay. So, um, <laughs> do you agree with that, or do you disagree with that? You know, every day, the other day I was laughing and joking about it as soon as I saw the goggle thing, because mm-hmm. actually, pre-goggle thing, mm-hmm. you know, they were talking about the mask pre-goggle. and stuff, and I'm putting <laughs> shit out there on social media, and I'm going, well, shit, you guys, mm-hmm. all the experts are saying you're actually more likely to contract it through your eyes than you are through your through the mask anyway. Oh, so, here we go. And then next thing you know, here comes the freaking goggle thing. So I'm thinking, ah, somebody was listening. Mm-hmm. Oh, <laughs> that no. That paranoid little brain cell in the back of my brain was going, somebody was listening to Actually, me. And then, logical. And then right after I saw the goggle thing and I said, mm-hmm. oh, great, now we're going to have body condoms. Or maybe they'll put us <laughs> in those big bubble things. Because I, I got those battle <laughs> bubble things for my grandsons for birthday a couple of years ago where you put the bubble on it and you bounce into each other oh, and so i'm sharing pictures like this and wow. going yeah this is going to be next you're going to yeah. be bubble boy bouncing yeah. around up against everybody be like a freaking human pinball machine going you know traversing the streets which could be quite fun for the motorists involved because if you can hit someone and grab their hat before they hit the ground and bounce off to somewhere else They'll never know it was you that took their hat. But I digress. In any case, I said this shit, and now they're coming up with this, you should be wrapped up, in, or you should, you know you're going to have to. And it's like, what? Am either either I'm like Nostradamus, and I see this shit, 
before they spit it out or somebody's listening to me. But either way, I'm Nostradamus, I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Not so dumbass. <laughs> I don't know. It's well, crazy. It's insane. Uh, after, I guess after the 60 years that I've been around being called a wacko, after a while, I think I just got used to it. I I would I would feel uncomfortable if people were instantly in tune with me. I didn't meet that is Cirque a, that on is good terms. That's a weird terms. feeling, isn't it? I, I you know, did, when you, did I meet Cirque you, on good terms? No. That's how I interact with people, open and honest. And willing to forgive. If you're willing to forgive, it's... Eh. But if something goes on for years and it just progressively gets worse, nah, fuck that. You know, but meeting people in an argument for me is like a normal thing. I've had some of the best friends in the world in my life. I met arguing about something, disagreeing about something, or on opposite mm. teams, or whatever have you. But, hey, met them, argued a little bit, and went, hey, I don't give a fuck. Do you give a fuck? No. Let's work on something else. There you go. It's the guy that wants to hang on to the fight. <sighs> they keep fucking it up for the rest of us. They won't move forward, Mary. You might not believe this. Are you sitting down, Mary? Yes, I am, actually. Are you Are you wearing your thinking hat? No, I'm just wearing headphones. Okay. I could uh, put my thinking uh, hat on, though. Headphones might work. Do you know oh, okay. that I think we're kept at odds with each other on purpose? It's all part of politics and education and religion. That's where they join forces to keep us stupid. And it worked. Mm -hmm. Anybody mm -hmm. that refers their knowledge to one of those three things I just mentioned usually gets right on the shit list. And that'll get you... Because uh, I judge. You You didn't know that, did you? No, I didn't know you were a judgy little Jewy Mexican bastard. I'm a bastard. judgy little Jewy Mexican bastard, let me tell you. Yeah, <laughs> and you know what I judge with? I what think I think I judge by vibration, but it's because of the way I hear or read what I'm looking at or hearing. Hmm? The way it hits ah. me... You can write whatever you write, but the way it hits me is my thing. It's got nothing to do with you anymore. Once I read it, it's mine. Eh? 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 Oh, yeah. Well, then all this bullshit we're doing is just an illusion. It's not real. Real things will. Hmm. You can't seriously, just in passing, hurt somebody verbally. Okay, In passing, you can. If you're personal and you sit down and you have a debt. But in passing, eh. so I think what I've done is put it in terms of how much time I spend doing that. How much of that am I going to absorb and carry with me? And then there's some things that are just daily in your face. Yeah. Mm. But my choice still. So eh, eh, it's all an illusion. It's whatever I want it to be. I could snap tomorrow and believe my cat talks back to me if I wanted to believe it. Because the fucking How guy... you know he doesn't talk back to you and you're just not really tuned into the vibe yet? No, he's got me on the vibe, but I don't hear words yet. But I know different cries mean different wants. And I've narrowed it down to four that I recognize. Ah. Yeah, and I'm right about half the time. Sometimes I'm tricked and he just wants to rub against my leg. But usually when there's a sound connected to it, it's food, out, upstairs, window. Those are his four things. Ah. Mm -hmm. he's, he's training you. So oh. You're coming along nicely. Yeah, he's had six years or five and a half years. Five and a half, almost six. It'll be six in October if we, if we survive till October through the COVID. <laughs> The deadliest pandemic that mankind has ever seen. And the victims of this horrible fucking wretched virus are still today 
Six and a half months later, pissing and moaning on the RLM chat. Wow. <laughs> Fucking get sick or something already or shut up. Oh, that was just me blowing up some steam. Thank you. Yeah, you did say that out loud. I don't care. <laughs> Who listens to me anyway? I mean, Christ, even Cirque rolls her eyes. I go, wow, damn, Cirque. <laughs> and then you you go, are you listening to me? Did you hear what I said? <laughs> yeah, nah. <laughs> That's all right. I'm so used to it. And that's it. It's part of my illusion is to, you know, be superior and above everybody. Just like you. <laughs> Only it's me. <laughs> ah. Yeah. Gee, I never really thought. See, and that's one of those things that I I don't know that that anyone is superior. Oh, yeah, definitely. No. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel way superior to the person that cowers to the uh, corona hoax. Sure. They're and hurting yet, their self. from their perspective, they're probably that, feeling very superior uh, over you. Uh, 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 illusion. Illusion. My illusion, not theirs. Don't give a fuck about their illusion. I only care about my illusion. Nana, nana, boo -boo. Yeah, you are, you selfish, mexi bastard. Well, <laughs> a little honesty could uh, make a difference. No, it couldn't. You know what really makes difference in life? Not the truth, the lies. People don't believe the truth. The truth goes right by them. They go, ah, fuck you, truth. Where's a good story? I want to hear a good lie. Ah, the truth and it's naked. Ah, cover your eyes. Thank yeah. you, Circle. <laughs> what was it I saw the, the other day? And I can't I remember who the quote's attributed to, but they said there are three kinds of lies in this world. Mm -hmm. There's lies, there's big lies, and then there's statistics. Oh, there's lies, I, damn, I, that's Mark Twain. Lies, damn lies, oh. and statistics. Yeah. Uh, Mark Poo you. wrote that. Samuel Clemens. Yeah, same guy. Different dress. Yeah. 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 Hey, you know what you, we never talk about on here on the In a Perfect World? What's that? The end of the world. But how can there really be an end of the world? Because every ending has a beginning. Are you sure? Well, so far, why oh. ruin the track record? Well, it's been see, working so far. That's where doing radio with Larry and Rob on Thursdays is just kind of open up some new doorways for me to peer into, I suppose. The vibration, the frequency, the electromagnetics, how they affect us, and wh what things we're not told affect us that affect us. You got to look for answers. Answers are not there blinking, waiting for you to find them. They're buried under the dog shit. You got to move all the shit aside to find the fucking truth. It's, it's a trip. I am freaking out, man. <laughs> and is it the truth, or is it just what you need to know to get you to the next level? That's what I think that how it works is whatever my truth is that I believe. That truth is usually whatever I believe that made me feel good. Whatever I was looking for. The chat. The truth doesn't mm -hmm. matter. See, the, the words don't fucking mean anything. They're entertainment along the road. Give you something to do when you're, you know, cleaning the kitchen or whatever. Listen to this on headphones or some crap. But uh, it's just opinions about stuff that you probably don't even care about. It's just something you, some crazy person brings up and then, hey, I never thought of that. And that's how it should be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Entertainment. Have a giggle for five minutes. Just, you know, take off the stress suit. Kick back. Take off the stress suit. Well, mm -hmm. I've got a buddy on the RLM by the name of Rob Works. And mm -hmm. uh, me and Rob and Larry started doing a radio podcast. And uh -huh. up until that point, Rob wasn't very talkative. And when we first started doing the radio podcast, Rob wasn't very talkative. But we've come a long way, and now you know what Rob is? What's that? Talkative. Sweet. Yeah, he's opened up his side of the coin, and he makes his statements now. So I got in there for introducing and then questions when there was dare to air time. Tried to think of something to talk about. And now Rob's pretty much doing half of it. There you go. So, well, I'm on radio quite a bit. So it's kind of cool that I, you know, I participate in that, but it's not my show. That's their show. Cool. And I have learned a lot of stuff off that 
that if I should live longer enough, longer than I have so far, these things will um, bear some fruit in the future for me. Hmm. Well, some people look at, at life in terms of coincidence and happenstance, and I don't. I look at life as a freaking plan, and if you make the right turns, things go your way. And there, along the road, there are things that you will see, and they will be disguised as other things that you don't need. But if you look close enough, you'll find you need those things. You just really don't know why. And then some conversation comes up, and, oh, my buddy in town is an electrician. Hmm. There you go. As an wow. example, as a roundabout, because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not the one that understands the electric as well as my friend in town does. But I understand yeah. other things related to it, yet I haven't had an opportunity to sit down and talk to the guy. But I didn't meet him for nothing. I mean, we share a birthday, uh, the month birthday, uh, September. So every, you know, and I see him regularly. But uh, this kind of conversation requires just a little bit of privacy because it sounds nuts. Yeah. Well, Larry... Larry finally broke down and realized, I suppose, this is my version of his story, is the only way we're going to ever get free energy is to sell it. There's no way to realistically give this to the world as a gift. Tesla tried it and they crushed him. If he would have been a computer in the finance world, then he would have probably had a foot in there. But he didn't. He wanted to be. Um, he wanted to give it to us as a gift. Like Larry. Larry does, deep down, I know this about Larry. This is my feelings about yeah. him. He, he, If he could just give it to us all, he, he would. But he can't. So they're going to have to go the commercial route. And that'll bear fruit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. George Carlin said, I... if you nail two things together that have never been nailed together before, some schmuck is going to buy it from you. And it's the same thing. Once you start something and you get one person to try it, the next thing you know, you got ten people behind them. It's cracking the wheel and getting that first customer that's hard. But these people seeked him out, so he wasn't looking for them. They were looking for him. It's different. Ah. But it's based well, on what? Yet you hear stories and stuff about people that come up with these wonderful things and... They disappear. Next, you know, yeah. 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 That's they why, disappear or yeah. they drop dead after dining well, with yeah. some people in a restaurant. Or, you okay, know. that tells me you didn't listen to the last show. We we did a really kind of a, well, the recording had some problems. Larry fell out. <laughs> well, but, and I started listening to it, but then yeah. I got a phone call yeah. from my mother. So, well, yeah, you're he, right, I didn't. Larry, Larry said in the show, I'm going to quote him. I hope he doesn't get mad at me for this, but he said, fuck America. It's the the coding of the electrical laws prohibit progress from ever taking place. Yeah. All right. Yeah. As long as the the state can control your your future, you're stuck. So he finally they had to go out of America. There you go. And as sad as that, you know, because that's fucking sad. America needs it so bad right now. And they help, help. They think help is a fucking stimulus check. These people have been just stomped into submission. You can't well, survive. And it's, yeah, those who write the rules of the game tend to win the game until you tell them, fuck you, I'm not playing anymore. Yeah. And like with Larry, as, as, you, as what I'm getting from you, mm -hmm. someone from outside of the rules, mm -hmm. if you will, mm -hmm. contacted him. Oh no no! And what so what I'm, is working outside of the rules? No no correct? no! Outside of the country, not not international no, law it, doesn't wait. International law is different in different countries. America, I know that, and that's yeah. why I said outside the rules because the rules is the U.S. the ruling paradigm. They oh wrote okay the rules yeah. I got lost. Yeah, I got lost in that. Yeah. Sorry, Mary. But yeah, no, uh, it's interpretation and the way we talk is so odd sometimes. But yeah. Uh, yes. So by being held back in the U.S., he was forced to go outside. And well, we're going to wait and see what comes of it. But what I'm saying from my experience, I've sold new products in America in the 70s, late 70s. 
And I know how hard it was to get it started, but once it caught on, boy, you could, people were calling orders in. Once you got word of mouth going and a guy put it on his truck and went, hey, this shit's easy to fucking handle. I'm never using that old shit again. Where'd you get it? <laughs> Cataflex. So, there you go. Yep. Well, it's just like that. It was, um, hey, this is new. Yeah, this guy's been hauling gas for 20 years and he knows everything about his truck. And he gets a phone call from some California salesman that's got a better thing than what he's using. <laughs> well, what I found out was if you'd take a few minutes to send him a sample of the shit, four-inch sample, cost a few bucks to send it in the mail back in those days. Uh, then mm -hmm. the mail, but the delivery, whatever they used. Yeah. Well, that's how I did it. There you go. But this is bigger than that, but it's just still the same principle because there's eight billion of us. There's people all over the world looking for ways around this oil problem we have. And there's enough people that have made a point of saying, uh, in so many words, but there's people you can't convince of this. There is no safe way to store electricity. No. Period. It can't. It's not been done yet. Let's just say that. To where you can get it enough of it stored to make it worth having. Because you're constantly running out of the shit. So, hmm. No, that's not, that didn't sell me. Might have sold other people, but. Not the personal, Mike. Not, not picking on you. It's just I have a different way of looking at it, I guess. If you're listening. Sometimes Mike listens to us. We never know. Mm -hmm. Well, he's pro-battery and I'm not. Not in the, not, not so much against it. I'm against the way that they're do, doing it today. I'm convinced that there's a, a safer, better way to do this, and we're being held back from it behind the, the guise of safety measures for the electrical people. Yeah? And these yeah. people, are they do a dangerous fucking job. That Believe me. And do you think they're afraid in the first place they need to be told what's safe? and They should be able to choose what's safe or not for themselves. But law. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> Makes yeah. musk. Well, I got the same thing here. It's just uh, loose rope. Denmark is a little bit. As long as I don't get into the finance, I'm good. The minute I start trying to compete with Danes for money, I lose my welcome status. Then I'm oh, a, yeah. a hostile American trying to, you know, butt my nose into their economy. And nah, that's not what I want. But that's how it's taken, and especially with all this COVID shit now. You can't go anywhere, do anything, without 50 people you don't know knowing it. Hmm. Well, when I first got here, I was walking to Freetown every week going to get ash. I wouldn't even uh -huh. consider trying it anymore. Just because of all the, the uh, snoopiness, you know, the turning your neighbor crap. Yeah. Because it brings that out. People are afraid and they're suspicious. Hey, I saw a long hair guy walking and there's a, you know, there he's not wearing a mask. He's not supposed to be there. Who knows? Why Why risk it? I don't know. Hmm? I, I, you know, I... Mm. Well, there's... Well, common, I like my little corner of exactly, the Exactly. Right. So, but if I hadn't lived in the city all those years... I wouldn't probably have the behavior and the attitude I carry today to get me where I'm at, to be comfortable with what I've got. I'd still be greedy living in the city, fighting for that extra dollar. <laughs> but nah, it's not worth it. Yeah, that extra debt note. Okay, well, see, me and you see that so clearly compared to a lot of other folks. Oh, like the way we see the Bitcoin thing, other folks don't agree with us. And I don't understand why not. The logic is right there. It's self-explanatory. There's no mystery about it. But yet, the, they've convinced, uh, yet again, another fiat scam. Hey, let's do it with the computer. It'll be different this time. Hey, we'll value the fucking imaginary money on other imaginary money. Eh, that'll work. And you know what? Mm. what's going on right now that's really making me laugh? What's that? Metal prices are going up. Yeah, I saw something about 
Silver was at. <laughs> uh, who was at uh, six or eight months ago bitching about, oh, there's no COVID. It's a financial collapse. They're hiding it from us. <laughs> well, and they're falsely holding down the price of precious metals. Oh, well. right. Yeah. Now they're going to cut it loose because all the physical stuff is all gone. All you can buy now is paper. Ah. I was just reading last week. There's shortages in supply on um, silver bot purchases. They're backlogged. You can't get it. It's not even there. Yeah. They're imagining shit. They're, they're in the trillions of dollars. These people are fucking insane. So what they got to do to justify all this shit is make an ounce of silver, I don't know, $5,000 or so, so that you'll never be able to buy an ounce of silver. And the dollar is worthless. So they can people see that and they go, wow, look at how much silver is worth. And I see it and I go, wow, look at how much the dollar is tanked. Yeah. Wait until you, you can't even use the fucking thing. You're going to be dependent on electronic currency, just like I am. It's over. Finished. We're just, some places are just dragging it out. Like here, they take cash here. But it, I can see 10 years from now they won't. Well. Now, here it'll be a matter of convenience but in the big crowded places it'll be a matter of control See? it's mm -hmm. all how you live how you live the illusion makes you happy or sad about the illusion hey there no might quit i guess you got mad at me or maybe it's just coincidence i don't know uh we're at the end we got the 10 minutes to go miss mary i think unless i am yeah. wrong on the clock yeah. no eight that's what my computer yeah, says nine o'clock Wow, boy, I don't shut the fuck up when you get on the radio with me. When you're not here, I struggle for shit to talk about. And when you are here, I can't shut up. <laughs> I know. It's like I can't get a word in edgewise you or frontwise or partways <laughs> you or lying. highways. Or... You're lying. Now you're lying. I know. Now you're just I'm trying. not lying. You're I'm making me look bad. <laughs> Prevaricating? <laughs> I'm prevaricating. Prevaricating. I am stretching the truth mm. so thin mm. that it becomes one of them viruses that infects your mind. Because once I stretch it so thin, it'll just slice the top of your head right off. Mm. Well, I'd, yeah. like, I'd like to spend a few moments. Uh, Grimner, I listened to his show. It's all connected this afternoon. Uh-huh. And he was saying he's not having fun doing the show. He's and and he he seems to have narrowed it to his topics. And he the was looking format, for yes. yeah. He, so he's looking for ideas. And I came up with he loves Sammy. He love a Sammy sandwich. And I bet if he did a show, how the girl got started playing guitar. This is just an example of not necessarily her, but some that would interest him. And I learned from my father. He says, the way we got you to read was to find things that you liked. If you liked it, you wouldn't give it back. If you didn't like it, you wouldn't do it. Oh. Yeah. So he said, we, we learned to go with your taste. And when I was older, he explained to me. Because I learned how to read really young before I went to school, and it really didn't go over well. But yeah. He's talking about oh, yeah. it's all connected, maybe something in music with a, a certain guitarist or the origination of the blues, how it began, somewhere like that. I don't know. And that was what I thought, things that tickle you. Hmm? Well, yeah, things that, hmm? things that you're interested in. Yeah. yeah. And the more, and that's, you know, that's one of those things. I, I know this will come as a shocker to you. But I can connect the dots to just about anything, depending on what I start with. I can meander around and make that logic so tortured, mm. and I can I can connect it with something else. But you know, because connecting the dots is really, I love those connect the dots thingies in in the highlights magazine oh. when I was a kid. Yeah, and I I always did them in pencil. My brothers did them in ink and used to piss me off, but mm. I would do them in pencil so I could erase it, and then I would connect the dots in a different pattern. Mm. You know, see whatever other stuff I could come up with, because I'm weird like that. 
Mm. But I, I enjoy being able to see, just to see if I can make anything recognizable out of connecting those dots in a different way. Mm. And so, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be a logical everyone can see. <laughs> Sweet. Some, no. Sometimes you have to uh, come at it from a totally off-the-wall, bass-ackwards direction. And oh, then yeah. after you step back and look at it and you go... Holy shit, that actually makes sense. <laughs> Me and Cirque have not, in six and a half years now almost, we have not made one decision based on logic. It's all been emotional bullshit from the moment we met. Well, there you go. But no logic or planning or none of that. Let's just do it. And that's the way we've been. But as I get older, I slow down a little bit. I'm starting to enjoy my lazy abilities, you know, exploring, not doing shit <laughs> instead of, you know, because I spent a lot of years staying busy and all that. Now I'm like, wow. <sighs> oh, I just had that in my head because Grimmy is a music aficionado. Do Pretty you like much, the yeah. Doors, Grim? Because uh, what's his face from the Doors? His dad was like in the Air Force. Jim Morrison's father was an admiral in the Navy. He was oh, involved in, the in Navy. he was involved in the, yeah. the Tonkin experience. The Gulf of Tonkin. And, yeah. Yeah. And so when you when you look at that and then you look at some of the innovative things that Jim Morrison was doing, you know, maybe the connection between the military industrial complex and some of the the changes that we have thought were, you know, like, um, oh, well, that's just the way music evolved or whatever. No. Did yeah, have no. a little prodding going on. Yeah. I really honestly think the hippie movement hmm. was on to something. I really think oh, initially yeah. the yeah. hippie movement was on to something. They shut them and down. And then it got infiltrated and got subverted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they broke up the yeah. Beatles and then they went to all this... And then they shot a lot of people down, Joplin, Morrison. Uh, and to this day, I'm not sold on those deaths being real. Possibly, but maybe not. Like, oh, that, all the years I, I've read over the, um, Jim Morrison's life, but when you think about the today, it makes a lot of sense to fake his death when, they, when he supposedly died. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, just like the, uh, was it the Challenger? Shuttle that blew up? Yeah. Nobody died on that. But I'm just yeah, saying... Yeah, there's but, like seven of the eight people are still alive. Well, I see, <laughs> I seen a link that changed my whole perspective on how I see it today. And it was of the band talking about... Uh, Jim went to France. What? Oh, well, I guess that's good for him. But they were surprised. He had open court cases in Florida uh, on a uh, public exhibition shit. Yeah. So why would he go to France to relax? What? And then, oh, but then he dies. And I yeah. and the one thing I thought, the only thing that made me think his death couldn't have been a hoax was his tie to the girl. Uh, what was her name? Uh, anyway. I don't know. But she died 10 years after he did, <clears throat> supposedly died. And I'm thinking, mm -hmm. hmm, maybe, maybe Jim and... Uh, Pam Carson. Maybe that was just publicity bullshit made up for the news, too. We, we get lied to about every fucking thing. Why not music and the personal stuff about him? It's all we get told. We weren't there. What do we know? Well, it's the Truman Show okay. on a massive scale. But I'm today I believe it's possible that, that Morrison faked his, uh, his death. And it's because of it, who his father was. And, yeah. and, wow, everything I've ever been taught by somebody else is usually turns out to be bullshit. Mm -hmm. So, well, in a perfect world, we're striving for, I don't know, perfection. <laughs> uh, I, that I wrote it down one time. Mm -hmm. Everything that you thought was true was taught to you mm -hmm. by someone who also thought they knew. <laughs> yeah. And that's something. Mm-hmm. Whoa, I'm getting very low on the start the podcast. Okay, where are we at? 
Time-wise, folks and folkettes, we've come to the uh, last minute of the In a Perfect World podcast. So thanks for hanging out with me and Grammy. I had a good time tonight. It flew by. It's over. Oh. Yes, it did fly by. I know. Yes, it did. And I can tell because now I'm ready for a nap. <laughs> uh, and, and well-deserved. And it's good to hear that you're uh, so well-recovered so quickly after what could have been the wreck that ended your freaking life. So Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, near death is... See, that's, that's just one of those things where it's like, I just don't know what good enough to to be broke down, apparently. I, you know, I ain't <laughs> smart enough to figure out I'm supposed to be broke down. It's like, oh. what? You didn't bother telling me that shit. Uh. And you know what? It runs in the family. Because mm. um, number three son, mm. uh, older brother, he... Uh, when he was 14, hmm. 14, he got run over by a grain truck. Oh, fuck me. Well, actually, the hay bale truck. Yeah, they were hauling hay bale. Yeah, well, hit, hit his And he, yeah. he was hanging onto the side of the truck and, yeah. and thought he would be a smart ass and try and open the door and come, come oh. in. And, well, they hit a bump and oh. he lost his grip and, and the duels on the trailer ran over his, his pelvic area. Oh. And he stood up and then looked down, and one foot was pointing one way, and one foot was pointing the other way, yeah. and then he collapsed. And I know we're over time. Oh, but, you okay. know, they told Mom and Dad in the mm. hospital that he would never walk again, and if he did, it would be with crutches. Mm. They never told him that. Mm. Good. And within walked. eight weeks, yeah. he was walking. And within two years, he was the second fastest kid in high school in track. See, living proof that a positive mental attitude is a big mm -hmm. part of getting better from an injury. Yep. There you go. It's yep. so simple, Mary. And uh, do we have you on the dork table next week? Uh, this coming Saturday, yeah. As far as I know, I will be here. Okay. Well, thanks a lot, everybody. I'll let Mary yak until she's finished, and then Thank we'll go. Thank you all. Have an absolutely splendiferous rest of your day, and I guess we will see you in the funny papers. Or maybe you'll see me in the funny papers, and you'll go, that's what she looks like. I, she kept saying she had purple and blue hair. She really does. Later. Later.